Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part four of our framework design and development video series. So in this part, we're going to discuss about kickstarting our framework development. So before starting this part, I would request you to watch part one, two, and three, since this part will fully relay on those three parts. Okay, so let's get started. So as I told in this series, we are going to design a all new framework starting from start to the end. So the first phase should be the design phase. So the design phase is a good place to start our designing of our automation framework. So before we start developing a framework, we need to consider all the points which we discussed in the part one of a video series. So in part one, we discussed how our framework should look like. And also the framework should have the properties which we discussed like maintainable, readable, modularized and understandable and workable. So the same things we are going to incorporate even in our framework design. So as you could see in this design shown below, we are going to create a framework design project which will have the base libraries, the control libraries, the utility libraries and configurations for our framework. So in base library, we're going to include some of the page mo object model initializations, web driver setups, etc. So the page object models, which we are going to talk about the working of page object models in greater detail in upcoming video series, we're going to have that initialization happen in this base library. We're also going to initialize the web drivers for our frameworks. It can be a Firefox driver, it can be a IE driver, it can be a Chrome driver, or it can be an Opera driver. So all these initialization of web drivers will also happen in this base library. So you'll understand what base library means in our framework design video series. But as of now, just take this as a notes so that we can talk about them in greater detail in upcoming video series. Control libraries are going to be the wrapper libraries for our Selenium controls. Since we are going to design only our Selenium framework, we are going to just deal with Selenium controls here. So we're going to write a wrapper libraries for our selenium controls like entering a text clicking the buttons or performing some select operations in our drop down list box so the utilities libraries are something which can be used across our framework like reading the data from excel sheets database tables or logging the data etc all the configurations or the configuration files which is used across the framework which tells okay hey i'm going to run this sanity test for our application or i'm going to choose firefox web driver or i'm going to use this url of my application so all these configuration details will be available in the configuration modules of our framework so this is a bird eye view of our framework design so while we start working with the designing of our actual frameworks you'll understand what i'm talking about here just keep all these things in mind so that you can use this as a reference while designing our actual framework all right so these are the points to be considered while designing our framework the first thing is we're going to incorporate our page object model for object identification and then we're going to use excel to drive the data so this is what is going to cover our data driven testing for our framework and we're going to write some custom selenium wrappers for performing actions on the web elements and we are going to write this whole framework as a separate project so that we're not going to mingle this up with our test project which will have the test scripts to perform the testing of the actual applications well that's it guys so this is going to be our designing of our framework you will start to understand more about this framework while we start directly as a code. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.